Hello everyone, my name is Tim Stack and I am creating these tutorials as part of a Dreamweaver Part 3 course that we offer that is either in person or online. So if you're watching these tutorials on YouTube, you're welcome to uh, use them and hopefully learn from them. Uh, but if you notice me referencing uh, class materials, just know that that is for our in-person students. So this set of tutorials is going to be covering the agenda that we use in our Dreamweaver Part 3 class, which you can see on my screen now. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to do uh, a review of the previous class, which was creating a fire, uh, layout in Fireworks CS5 and then taking it, into, taking it into Dreamweaver and implementing it into a site. Um, and then I'll get into, in the next tutorial, into some Cascading Style Sheets basics, uh, a few other topics like embedding video and creating a feedback form, uh, and then we'll get into creating a full layout for your website using CSS. So let's go uh, from there. One other thing, if you're watching these videos on YouTube, I did record them in uh, as close to high def as I could get. So if you want to see a more clear version, there is a, uh, in the lower right hand corner of the YouTube uh, video window there, there's a little, um, a little control that you can open up and if you choose 720 HD off that menu, um, that will make the videos more clear and if you click full screen then you'll be able to see uh, much better than in that small window. So with that, let's get started. So in this first tutorial I'm going to do a quick review of the process that you go through to create a layout using uh, Adobe Fireworks CS5. So here's just a little mock-up example of what we might um, end up creating. I'm going to go back one here. So it might look something like this. Now, um, I'm going to do most of this work in Fireworks and then take it into Dreamweaver in order to create a template from what we create in Fireworks. So you can see um, I've got some rounded corners, I have some navigation buttons, and a big area for text, and then a uh, footer, and I just sort of laid over this little Shrek mouse and some cheese down at the bottom, just so you could see that using Fireworks gives you the ability to sort of break out of that really rectangular mode uh, that you often are in, and just uh, that, that HTML ends up putting us into. Okay, uh, quick little demonstration here of what we're going to create, just so you can get your head around of um, the parts that go into creating this kind of a layout. Um, I'm going to break this apart um, just so you can see. So initially I'm going to build a sort of base rectangle which defines kind of the width of my website and if I'm going to have rounded corners on it and if there's going to be any edge effects like you can see there's a there's a little gray glow around all four sides here. Then we'll create a header and uh, you can see I've used a photo for the header and again to get that rounded corners on there I'm going to have to create a mask. Uh, a little title of some sort, we might put a footer on, I'm not sure if I like that footer or not, um, but we might put a footer on and then we may choose to add some navigation buttons uh, to make it function and uh, for a little fun we might put a cheese and a mouse on. Alright with that let's jump right into fireworks and I'm going to open up a new Fireworks document. Now all I want here for the width is a width that I think is going to be wider, a little bit wider than my layout. So let's say I'm going to make this, this layout say 900 pixels wide for my site. Um, then I want to give myself a little extra working room and I'll uh, trim off any extra room that I don't need. And for the height, um, I'm just going to round that off to 500 and I think I just want a um, kind of a light colored background here and we might have to fine tune that once we get into Dreamweaver or I should say fireworks but we'll just put kind of a light light blue there okay alright so there's my document now I'm going to uh, adjust this so we can see more of the whole thing here let me just see if I can't get my layout set up here um, alright I want this up here 
and my property bar is down here so I'm assuming you have some firework skills if you're at this point um, but I'm just adjusting my window here so I can see my whole canvas so I don't have to scroll side to side as I'm working and there's a little zoom in and zoom out menu over here um, that allows me to do that okay so first thing I gotta create that rectangle so I'm gonna come over pick up the vector tools here and if I click on hold I can see all the options I'm just gonna pick up the the plain rectangle tool and drag out a rectangle it doesn't have to be the exact size quite yet but just in close to the general size so once that rectangle is out I can type in the exact width that I have down here in the property bar and the height I'm just gonna round that off to say 400 okay and then because I'm going to be stacking multiple things um, up here it's nice to have a little uh, easier uh, XY coordinates to remember so maybe I'll just do 30 30 there for the XY just in case things get out of alignment I can quickly put them back into alignment okay so for this one I'm just gonna put white fill and I don't want a stroke here so I'm going to take off that stroke uh, this is also the place that if I do want um, rounded corners then I put them on here. So let's say I just want uh, a 10% radius there on my rounded corners. Um, and that will be just fine. I'm going to back that off to maybe 7. Okay, so there's my settings for this base rectangle 900 by 400, and it's located at 3030. And it just has white fill, no stroke, and just uh, a little rounded corners. Okay, that's my base rectangle. Um, and it's going to sit underneath everything. So I want to now uh, create a couple of copies of this. So, um, however you like to create copies, so you could do edit, copy, and then edit, paste. Um, and you can see over here my layer panel, I'm going to paste one more so I get a total of four. Um, I can see that I have four rectangles. Now they're all stacked exactly on top of each other. So, really, I'm only seeing this top one that's highlighted. Um, I'm going to get to those top couple in a minute here so I'm going to lock all of them so I don't accidentally edit them and then I'm going to turn off each one of them so now this one out on the canvas that's the bottom one there and uh, now I can put on if I want a little bit of a glow around it to give it a little dimension now's the time to do it so I'll come down here into the filters uh, click plus and shadow and glow the difference between drop shadow and glow drop shadow is on two sides glow is all the way around so I'm going to select glow it comes up um, a five pixel wide glow with um, this red color mostly I think so you can see it and I'm just gonna choose a little darker color there so I'm just gonna choose sort of a, a medium gray and that is all that's going to happen on that very bottom rectangle so I'm going to lock that one and for now I'm going to turn off the eyeball so it's finished um, but so while I'm working on the on the next couple of pieces I want that one turned off alright so I'm going to go up to the next rectangle turn it on unlock it and this is the rectangle I want to use to create the mask or to create the header now I don't need the whole rectangle I just need the top um, hundred or so pixels of this rectangle um, but I can't really tell how much that is so I'm going to turn on um, the rulers so I can see the rulers um, and I can see down this left side there's a hundred so maybe 120 or so would give me a, a decent size header and I can pull even pull a guide out just let me just go grab up here and I can pull a guide out and put it at 100 so if I if I cut this rectangle on that line um, that would give me a 70 pixels high header because I've got the rectangle um, is slid down uh, 30 pixels so maybe I'll go to 120 here so I'll give myself a little larger header okay so I want to cut this rectangle into two pieces and remove the bottom piece so over here in the vector tools there is a vector knife so I'm gonna click on that to pick it up come up and to make sure that I cut in a straight line I'm gonna use that guy that I dragged out to cut on but if I hold down shift that will constrain so I start off the rectangle cut all the way across and I'm going to just let go of my left mouse button first and then let go of the shift key and um, if you look in the layer panel over here you can see that it's created two pieces they're both selected so if I click delete now then um, 
both would go away. So I'm just going to click here out on the canvas somewhere and then select that bottom piece and push delete and what's left behind is just that top piece that I need. And the reason why I cut that off is I'm going to create a mask of a image and this gives me that the piece that I'm going to use as my mask. Okay, so that's set. Now I need to bring in the photograph that I want to use. So I'm just going to do file import and um, I want to go out to the folder that I've created um, to, to hold this stuff. So I've created this folder called Geography Site and go into the Images folder and I've already loaded up some sample files and go into Photos and there's one called aspens.jpg. I think I'll use it. Click Open and now I, my cursor is turned into this, this right angle tool which gives me a couple of options. If I click once with it, the image comes in full size. Um, this image is about 1200 pixels wide, so it'll be a little bit too big. If I click and drag, it actually resizes the picture as it comes in. So I just need it to be a little larger than that piece. Okay, so there's the aspens that come in. And if I look in the layer panel, you can see that that photo is on top of everything in the stack. So if I want to mask it with that piece of rectangle that I created, I need to move it down in the stacking order. And I can just click over here and drag. And as I drag, you can see a thick line shows up. Uh, and I'm going to go all the way down until I'm underneath that path. And when I let go of it, you can see it changes its stacking order. Um, and now I'm, I just mostly want these aspen trunks. So I'm going to move down to about right there. Uh, and, I, and I don't want this picture to be um, these colors, so I'll fix that in a minute. Um, I really just want it to be black and white. But I'm going to get it masked first. So now I have the picture in about the right place. I have the path that I'm going to use, that part of the rectangle. And now I just need to get both pieces selected. So um, a quick way to do that is I can click over here in my Layers panel on the first piece that I want, hold down the Shift key, click on the second piece, and now both of them are selected. With both of them selected, I'm just going to go to Modify Mask and Group as Mask. Okay, And you can see that now I only see the uh, image through where that rectangle was. It kind of creates a window, if you will. Um, all right, so if you look really close there, there's a little handle that comes up, a little four-pointed handle, which allows me to slide the image around underneath the mask if I'm trying to find the sweet spot. Okay, I don't like the colors in there. I think I just want this image to be black and white. So um, just by clicking on it, it selects it. And under, uh, there's some presets here, Command, Creative, and I can do Convert to Grayscale really quickly. Okay, so, uh, okay, there you go. So maybe something like that will be an image to use for my header. Okay, so um, we've got our header created. I can, I'm going to lock that up and turn on my base rectangle so I can see how it's looking. So there's how it looks so far. Um, not too bad. All right, in the next uh, part of this tutorial, um, we'll finish up this layout and take it into Dreamweaver.